Okay, Jason, what do you want to talk about first? Well, the movie I was waiting in line for during Chef was Take Care. It's a movie starring Leslie Bibb. Her character, essentially, we learn that she has been in an uh, accident. She pretty much gets hit by a car, so she has a broken arm and a broken leg, which pretty much leaves her incapacitated and uh, at the will of her friends. Uh, she, of course, doesn't live on the first story of a New York City apartment, so you know there's antics that go to get her up to her apartment, and then essentially she's going to be laid out for, obviously, a, a number of weeks, so a lot of people sort of come in come in and out of her life, including, uh, you know, her best friend and her sister. And of course they all have their own lives. So they kind of are like, so I'm going to have to not take care of you. (laughs) And, uh, we basically, uh, run into also her, her neighbor who is, uh, quite the character. He uh, doesn't really have much sympathy for anyone, including this woman who essentially is just laying around, um, not able to take care of herself. And uh, despite some of her uh, attempts to get him to help her, uh, he still doesn't really care that much, which is which was, you know, leads to a couple of really interesting moments. But then uh, we, we see that she has to reluctantly ask her ex-boyfriend to then take care of her. So that uh, that's where kind of the story um, takes off, like mm-hmm. a, a chunk of the movie, uh, a large chunk of the movie is sort of them trying to uh, settle some things that happened in the past that they uh, – just kind of cut loose and moved on from. And uh, we, we kind of learned that she sacrificed a big chunk of her life and he kind of was just like, okay, I'm done. Like as soon as uh, that sort of resolved itself. So you, you do feel sort of sympathetic to mm. why she is kind of, she's kind of forcing him. She's kind of forcing his, her card on him. Like I helped you, now you're going to have to help me. Mm-hmm. And of course that doesn't make his new uh, girlfriend, if not fiance, uh, <laughs> very happy. Sure. So she kind of also plays a little bit of a, a role mm-hmm. in sort of the, there's like a triangle at that point where everyone's kind of uh, standoff-ish in terms of, okay, you're spending a little too much time with her now and I want to know why, I want to meet her. And of course, uh, this whole time, uh, Leslie Bibb is just, I mean, she, she's acting from a pull-out couch. And so uh, that kind of takes, I think, for an actor, a bit of not only physical strength, but probably uh, emotional strength, laying yourself out there, kind of just looking kind of grungy, not your best. I mean, she's obviously an attractive lady and usually comes off that way in most of her movies. And so um, I will say that uh, there are there are some really good sort of slapstick moments, a lot of physical comedy that... Um, has her kind of laid out in certain mm-hmm. situations where she has to kind of drag herself around the apartment, you know, mm-hmm. and then that's a lot of fun to watch. Uh, I will say that it's it feels a little episodic, and I think the reason for that is that the director actually uh, wrote for the last two seasons of Sex and the City. Hmm. So once I learned that after the fact, I was like, this makes this just totally makes a lot of sense. So uh, those uh, individuals out there that sort of would like uh, sort of a fleshed out edition like this could easily be like sex in the city three mm-hmm. or whatever um but uh, I, I think there are certain certain people involved that sort of take it to a, a a little bit of a better level uh to where um this is actually the the first feature for for the director uh liz uh, to i don't i think is her name she was really so just really fun and energetic uh seemed uh uh to be pretty much on any question that was was asked of her she um Definitely has uh, some relationships with these actors to sort of get them to do certain mm-hmm. things, which I thought was cool. Uh, the movie, I think they said it was shot in 19 days. Oh, wow. And they actually filmed most of it in the actual apartment you see. So um, that really does come off as like we're in New York City. We're in somebody's very, well, what they thought felt like in a large apartment until, of course, they get all that equipment in there. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and Leslie Bibb just really... Um, she really owns the role, and mm. so I, I, I really uh, appreciate it. And that's basically the why I saw, wanted to see the movie because um, because of her acting. I've enjoyed pretty much everything she's done. So um, definitely a date movie, mm. definitely one of those brownie point movies I like to call <laughs> uh, for the guys out there. I think I think there's enough there for, for guys to enjoy, uh, but certainly more sort of geared towards the, the female audience and probably a girl's night out type of film. So I, I would, I would give it a thumbs up. Uh, it, it was a little bit, not what I was expecting, I guess, 
uh, but not in a bad way. I just mm-hmm. was because uh, I didn't have the the large book that they they mm-hmm. give us at the time. I was looking at the <laughs> smaller book, and it's always nice to sort of look at the small book and then look at the synopsis in the larger book and be like, these don't match <laughs> like whatsoever. Um, and that's not necessarily a bad thing because I think the smaller book is maybe holding back a little bit, whereas you get a lot more details when you take a look at the uh, sort yeah. of press guide. I think is. A better term for it. So uh, the director also uh, wrote the book. Uh, He's just not a, that into you, mm. oh, which okay. most people would recognize immediately. So uh, again, uh, she. This is definitely her her fanfare sort of relationship comedy, uh, romance kind of stuff. So uh, again, take care. Uh, I, I thought it was. I thought it was a nice uh, start to the festival. It's about an hour and a half, so it's not too long. Mm-hmm. Uh, again, kind of just feels like a longer episode of a, a TV series. Which uh, again wouldn't be a bad thing. I, I think this could easily be a TV show. Yeah, you know, this could be a, a nice couple of episodes of a season. Mm-hmm. You know, and then it could essentially go from there. So, um, I have actually a quick question, yeah. if I may. For movies like that that take place all in one somewhat confined setting, yeah. I, they can tend to feel a little claustrophobic. Sure. Um, you said it's, it's obviously a shorter film than yeah. ninety minutes. Did you ever get that feeling given the given the space? No, and that's something that actually the director addressed uh, at the Q&A after the mm. film is that they really sort of uh, went out of their way to try to uh, find different sort of uh, camera angles and different uh, sort of scenarios. And of course, they played with as much depth of field as they could to kind of position themselves to where it didn't, you know, you're not just always getting the same close up mm-hmm. uh, or sort of the, you know, two shot scenario. So yeah, they really sort of go out of their way to really utilize the the um, apartment and even the apartment building because I mean it her neighbors like as soon as she opens her door his door is like <laughs> right right there at a 90 degree angle. Sure. And so it is definitely a confined space. But it, I I didn't ever sort of have that feel like they were just sort of being repetitive mm-hmm. with with shots. They they really went out of their way to make sure that uh everything felt fresh and of course um as sort of the the story goes on, we get outside a little bit, mm. which was kind of nice. By the end of the movie, we're you know we're definitely you know, well past her sort of recovery phase, and so she's able to to get out and about. And it is kind of refreshing because you're mm. right, it does you know it does sort of I guess feel claustrophobic, but during the the during the time, it doesn't necessarily feel that way until you know you get outside get and you're outside like, and you're, oh yeah, there's uh, a whole another yeah. city out here that <laughs> she's able to experience now because I think she lives like on the fourth story of this apartment, and it's obviously a, a ridiculous uh, scenario to try to get somebody that's essentially crippled <laughs> up those stairs. And so there's actually mm-hmm. a whole scene about how she's able to finally get up there. That That is sort of a very physical mm. part of the movie. So again, I enjoyed it. And uh, I'm not, I, I haven't heard anything in terms of it getting picked up by anybody, but I wouldn't be surprised if you, uh, you could probably eventually catch it on like Netflix or something. Yeah. It seems like that kind of uh, fanfare. It may, it may get released too. I'm not, I'm not sure. So. Yeah. A Place for Film is recorded at WFIU Studios in Bloomington, Indiana.